and that is because it is an optical illusion projected by the curvature of its eyelids. Notice that here you can see uh, the bottom eyelids, and therefore why do you keep zooming in on the face? We don't want to see that. And that's number three oh. is that on very rare occasions, uh, when the puppet actually escapes the music box. Welcome back to the Capri Dad's Reacts channel. It is Monday. Alright you guys, first of all, I'm going to start by saying this entire week, this whole week, I'm going to try my best to upload two, two, two bangers every day this week for y'all. So spam my comments up like crazy on what y'all want to see. I already know y'all want to see wrestling videos. I already know that. But just come with some more stuff, alright? What else do y'all want to see? Y'all want to see some gameplay? Y'all want to see, like, uh, music videos? What do y'all want to see? But anyway, we're going to jump into this video of Top 10 Facts About Marionette from Five Nights at Freddy's. Let's go. Hey guys, I did this top 10 a long time ago, uh, but I had to delete it because it had fan art in it. So this is a re-upload without the fan art. So please oh. enjoy. Hey, what is up guys? It is Mike here, and today I'm going to be showing you the top 10 hey, facts up, about guys? the marionette in Five, five Nights at Freddy's. This idea was suggested by YouTube user The Cool Man. So up number 10 is if you look into the marionette's eye when he attacks you, you will see that there is something peeking out from inside his right socket. It looks like some kind of a human eye almost. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Uh, some people say this might be the ghost of the dead kid who possessed the marionette. But also some people speculated that this could actually be uh, the reflection of the player, so Jeremy. Personally, I'm not sure which one it is, but it's definitely intriguing. And F number 9 is if you forget to wind up the music box and the marionette happens to escape there is a short window of time where if you look in the hallway cameras you will see hallucin pause let me just say something real quick i am so glad this stuff is not real because it's like slender man the boogeyman freddy jason all this scary stuff was real bro y'all won't be able to find me I'll be like buried somewhere under the ground. I swear. Cause that if that dude pop up in my dreams tonight, man, I'm coming after somebody. I'm coming after somebody. Let's get back into it. Nations of the marionette's face flashing in front of your eyes uh, for like a millisecond. And uh, yeah, that is very creepy indeed. And if you do happen to see it, that means you're pretty that much big old screwed. Head, Unless, man. of course, the clock hits 6 a.m. Bro, the that looks mad creepy. It don't you know, make now it. Now that I think about it, these hallucinations kind of remind me of the It's Me hallucinations in the first game. I don't know if the puppet had anything to do with that. But anyway, enough number eight is that the puppet appears to be somewhat sentient, which means that he has uh, sort of a consciousness. The reason we know this is because the phone guy, when he talks about the puppet to you, he says that the puppet seems to be always thinking. And this sort of reinforces the belief that a lot of people have, which is that the puppet Bruh. is actually possessed with the soul of a dead child. No. And this is what makes the puppet the most mysterious animatronic in the whole Five Nights at Freddy's game series. He represents sort of the paranormal element of the series. And that for fact number seven is that the puppet is actually a mix of multiple toys. These toys are, first of all, the sock monkey, because the puppet has a appearance very similar Look to a sock monkey. Look how creepy that is, very lean. Bro. It's also very tall, you know, and has very long arms and legs. And the second toy it represents is the jack-in-a-box, of course, because the winding up of the music box in game is very similar to the jack-in-a-box mechanism. The third toy is, of course, the marionette, because it is operated by strings. And, of course, pretty much all fans call him the marionette or the puppet. And finally, the last thing is the masks. It. You know those masks used in Look theater the, to the relationship between comedy and tragedy? Yeah, those. And that for fact number six is, uh, do you know that crying child uh, in the hallway poster in the first game? Well, that crying child probably represents the marionette. The reason why is because in the second game, in the Gift Cake to the Children minigame, you can see a child get murdered and his tear tracks strangely match the ones on the child poster and also, of course, the ones on the marionette. This is so and wrong. also, whose jump scare do you see at the end of the minigame? The marionettes. 
And then for fact number five is that the marionette doesn't actually have any official name. I mean, yes, of course, people call him like Slender Man for one. But officially, in whatever the, game, the thing his is, his name is never actually revealed if he even has one. The only what is reference called to be we have to the Man? marionette in the game is when the phone guy calls it that puppet thing. But otherwise, nothing. Even if you go uh, in the custom night menu, you can't change the marionette's AI, so it doesn't say its name there either. So yeah, that makes the marionette even more mysterious. You look like a messed up Slender Man. Is that the puppet's uh, sort of happy face is actually an optical illusion. Most of the time in a game, when you're looking at the marionette, you're looking at it either at equal eye height or you're looking at it from slightly below. But actually, the way the mask is designed is if you look at it from slightly up, it seems to be angry. And that is because it is an optical illusion projected by the curvature of its eyelids. Notice that here you can see uh, the bottom eyelids and therefore... Why do you keep the zooming in on the face? We don't want to see that. And that's number three, oh. is that on very rare occasions, uh, when the puppet actually escapes the music box, sometimes you might see an endoskeleton come out of it. I mean, you don't physically That's see nice. the endoskeleton crawl out of it, but he just kind of seems to appear next to the music box, and sometimes you will even see him crawling through the vents. And this kind of leads people to believe that the marionette forcefully keeps his endoskeleton in the box. Why he does that is unclear, but maybe in the third game, Scott could uh, shed more light on this. And then for fact number two is that the marionette is actually present in the first game. There are multiple pieces of evidence to support this. Uh, the first one is, of course, like I said before, the crying child poster in the first game. The second piece of evidence is that in the first game, on one of the drawings on the walls, you can see Bonnie come out of what appears to be the same gift box as the one that the marionette lives in. And finally, the third and most compelling piece of evidence for this is that in the second game, you know those visions that you have between each level? Well, these visions have the same model of Chica oh, and Bonnie mask. as in the first game, and also they are located in what appears to be the same party room as the first game, Bro. and so it is safe to assume that those visions represent the first game. I and would so never that in play mind, this If game. you look at the very, very last vision that you get, you get to see the marionette all up in your face. And now for fact number one is that the marionette is it! pretty much behind everything. Oh, I made a video no. about this before called Why the Marionette is Behind Everything. Look at it! So if you're interested, check that out. But in short, what happened is uh, pretty much the kid who got killed during the gift cake minigame went on to possess the marionette who then went on to transfer the souls of the dead children into the five animatronics uh, by stuffing them into the various suits which of course we can see happen during the give life minigame and then pretty much all the animatronics went on a rampage who then caused the bite of 87 and of course tried to kill the security guards and blah 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 so yeah in other words the marionette has a little army of killer robots at its disposal my dude <coughs> Who came up with this game? Like, the person, the creators that came up with this game, like, was it around Halloween and you just wanted to, like, create a scary video game for people because it was Halloween or you just really want some sick stuff because, uh, dude, are you, like, possessed? Who, who made this game? Like this one, I'm looking at this one video right here. It looked like Chica is pulling the freaking head off of Freddy. Like who made this? You trying to give kids nightmares? Playing this game? Like hello, like uh, uh hallucinations and other stuff, Foxy and crap. Like I don't even know what to say. I really don't. Um, bro, Marinette just looked like a whole like female slender chick. Yeah, this was a, a saying asylum type stuff. Whoever, whatever, I don't know whatever was going through your brain at the time who made this game, but I just pray that God keep you strong and uh, don't don't convince you to like uh, I hope no other natural forces is convincing you to complete acts like this on real life because it's some messed up stuff right here bro this is some messed up stuff who make this stuff like this hey, like, don't push that like button if you ain't already subscribed go ahead and subscribe because it's some major stuff that's gonna be going down on this channel leading up to December man in December man I just don't know man I might be feeling a holiday spirit and be doing a giveaway. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, you guys, comment, share, like, subscribe. This has been another Mission Completion, and I'll see you all in the next video.